Okay, in this video, we're going to uh, solve some of the problems for, uh, that relate to conservation of angular momentum or angular momentum in general. Okay, so here it says a 0.2 kilogram ball is whirled around a 0.3 meters string at a rate of 12 revolutions in, ev in 20 seconds. Now, I don't want you to think of the ball as a sphere. You have to think of it as a single particle going around an axis of rotation. And uh, because the mass of the string is going to be too small to be considered, or at least too small compared to the mass of the ball, so we're going to drop it. So the angular momentum is I omega. Now, I for a particle is m r squared times omega. Now, the mass is 0.2, r is 0.3 square and omega is 14 revolutions which is 14 times 2 pi radians in 20 seconds and if you do the math here you should get an answer now the units are well i is kilograms uh, meters square and this is radians per second so per second okay 64 a 10 kilogram rotating solid disk. Now this is, it's rotating on its self, okay? Um, it has a radius of how much and angular momentum. So what's the angular speed? So again, L equals I omega. The L is 0.45. The I for a disk is one half M R square. Just be careful, sometimes it says radius times omega. And you can solve that equation, and you should get 1.44 radians per second. Okay. A figure skater uh, during her final final can increase her rotation rate uh, from an initial rate of one revolution every two seconds to a final rate of three revolution per second. So now here we don't have to change. Uh, the units for uh, omega, okay? If her initial moment, moment of inertia is 4.6 kilograms meters square, so that's the I, what's her final moment of inertia? So we're gonna write that momentum is conserved, there's no external torque, so this is gonna be I, which is 4.6, now her omega is 0.5, in other words, it's one divided by two, equals uh, the I we're looking for times three. So the I final should be, uh, what is it, 0.77 uh, kilograms meters square. Now for number 66, we're going to think of this mass as a single particle going around the axis of rotation, which is going right through the table, going up towards the, the ceiling. Um, okay, here I think I showed you in the previous video that L for a single particle or a hoop can be MRV. Okay, or MVR, it doesn't matter. Uh, what is the speed of the mass? Okay, so we're going to do it. Momentum, momentum initial equals momentum final. That's angular momentum. And the mass is the mass, so we don't care. It's going to cross out. You can probably see that. MV or MVVVV, it's 2.4 times R, which is 0.8, equals M times the new V times 0.48. Okay? And that should give us a final velocity of uh, four meters per second. You could have done this one here with uh, omega, but I think it's a waste of time because you have to change to omega and change back to linear speed, so. Okay. Michael Jackson spins at a rate of four, six radians per second when his arms are stretch 0.75 meters from the axis of rotation while holding a 15 kilogram mass on each hand. Now for this problem here, we're gonna ignore Michael Jack the, the, the mass of Michael Jackson's arm, which is big approximation. Technically, we shouldn't ignore it. 
but we're going to ignore it for this one. Uh, what is the angular speed of the king of pop when he pulls his arms in? So they are 115 meters from the axis of rotation. Now, we can do this conceptually. I mean, not conceptually, but uh, doing ratios. Now, the distance to the axis of rotation is decreased by five times, right? Now, keep in mind that the, the distance is squared, which means his omega is going to increase by five squared, okay? So five squared, which is 25 times six, we should end up with 150. That if you want to do it with, if you, that's if you want to do it with proportions. If you want to do it the long way, we can do that. So his initial angular momentum is equal to his final angular momentum. Now, uh, I is just going to be the I for the, for the 15 kilogram mass. So we're going to do uh, uh, M. Oh, he holds one on each hand. So we're going to do 15 MR squared times his initial omega. But that's twice, okay? Equals, well, it's the same mass as on the other side. So the mass is going to cancel out anyway. Times 0.15 squared times the new omega final. Okay? And you can see what I was talking about here. This is 75. This ratio here is uh, 1 to 5. So omega is going to increase by 5 squared. If you do the math here, you should get 150. Okay. A skater rotates at 1.5, 1 1.2 revolutions per second with arms at her side, with her, at her side. When she ra raises her arms to a horizontal position, her speed decreases. Now, she, it decreases because the mass is no longer close to her body, but it's further out, so lazy. So it's not going to want to rotate as fast. Okay, by how much has her rotational inertia changed? Well, this is going to, we're going to say the initial I times the initial omega. We're going to leave it in uh, revolutions per uh, second because this is also in revolutions per second equals the I final times 0.8. So I final equals I initial times 1.2 divided by 0.8 and uh, so this is going to be 1.5. Is it? Yeah. OK, 1.5 times I initial. OK, so that's by how much the rotational mass is going to change. And it has to be greater than before because now the, the arms are stretched out. OK, 69. A skater has a moment of inertia of 100 kilograms per meter square when his arms are, out, are outstretched and a moment of inertia of 75 kilograms per meter square when his arms are tucked closer to his body, which makes sense. Less inertia when the, the, uh, when the masses are closer to the axis of rotation. If he starts his spin at an angular speed of two rotations per second, that's not radians per second, that's rotations per second, with his arms outstretched, what will his angular speed be in radians per second when they are tucked in? So let's do it in RPS and we'll change it later. So I initial, omega initial equals I final, omega final, because there is no external torque. So momentum is conserved. I mean angular momentum. Uh, uh, so we're looking for now we have this, uh, yeah, so it's 100 times 2 equals 75 times, this is omega final, omega final. So omega final is going to be, it's going to be 2.67, but that's RPS. Now how do you go from RPS, rotations per second, to radians per second? Well, each rotation has 2 pi radians. So times 2 pi radians per second. And your answer should be 16.76 radians per second. Okay. A gymnast swings her body around a bar by her outstretched arms 
and her angular speed is four radians per second. Now, so this is the bar, okay? I'm gonna try my drawing here, right? Okay? She's holding on to the bar, okay? Now, she's basically like a rod going around its end. So the moment of inertia is one third ML squared, okay? What is her angular speed when she pulls in her legs and decreasing her body length to two thirds its original value? So she, she brings in her legs now, which means she's closer to the axis of rotation because her length is less, so she should go faster, okay? So we should get a number that's bigger than four. Now, we can do this with proportions. The distance to the axis of rotation decreased by two thirds. Now keep in mind that the L has a square on it. So which mean, and the I and the omega are inversely proportional. When the I is small, the omega is gonna be more uh, large. So which means the omega is gonna increase by nine fourths. Okay, because they're, they're inverse relationship. So my answer should be nine fourths of four, it should be nine. Let's see if the math tells us, uh, confirms that. So uh, I initial omega initial equals I final omega final. Now the initial I is, uh, is one third her mass L square times four equals one third M. Now the length is two thirds of what it used to be. You have to put the, you have to square the whole two thirds L times omega final. And that's what I was talking about. See, this is gonna become four ninths, and when you move it here, it becomes nine fourths. The mass goes away, of course, the third goes away. So the omega final, after you do the math, it should be nine radians per second. Or you could have done it just with proportions. Okay. Okay, the angular momentum here is gonna be MRV, okay? Okay, because this is gonna like be here, it's like rotating around this central axis here when it's here, okay? So it's MRV and that's gonna be, uh, okay, the R here, it's extremely important, is the distance between this line that represents the direction of travel, okay, between that line and the axis of rotation, just like what we did with torque, basically. It's the shortest distance between the two. So M is basically M, V is V, and R is just A, based on this coordinate system. So it's M, A, uh, V. So the answer should be B. So just keep that in mind. The R is the distance between the line that the, of the speed or the velocity and the axis of rotation. Okay. Okay, now for this one here, the scalar is gonna hit the board, okay? Uh, okay, so the scalar, not, does not hit it, it just hops on it, right? So now for the scalar slash board system, right? There is no external torque. If we consider, there is definitely a change in momentum of the board and a change in momentum of the scalar, but as a whole system combined, as one, one system together, the linear momentum is conserved because there is no external force or no external impulse. Okay, because the scalar is part of the system and the angular momentum is conserved because, again, the scalar that generated, this to uh, generated the torque is part of the system. Okay, uh, the next question, 73, should be this very similar to the previous one. It's just A and B. Oops. Okay, let's look at 74. For 74, we're gonna do the conservation of angular momentum. So the angular momentum of this here, so this is going at a velocity V initial, I guess, right? Okay, 
So the momentum of that is just going to be Li equals Lf. Now I'm considering the ball and whatever this, uh, this rod is as one system together. So this, was, this had no momentum. This one here had momentum with respect to this point, right? So that's going to be the mass of it, the distance between this line and the axis of rotation. It pivots around this point here, so that's D, okay, times V. So the, the MRV that I talked about before, okay? Now that's going to be equal to the momentum of the ball after it bounces. Now that's going to be also M, D, V, final. This is initial, of course, okay? Uh, but this is going in the opposite direction. Keep in mind that momentum is a vector quantity. Plus, the rod has some momentum now because it's spinning. Now, if we try to do, find the L of the rod, we can move this over, and you can see that they both have MV, which is the linear momentum. And I can factor out a D, and it was gonna, it's going to become P initial plus P final. That's the linear momentum. Look, I'm just going to sidetrack here for a second. Uh, you can also, we, we didn't derive this in the first video, but angular momentum is I omega, right? Now, also, kinetic energy, rotational, is one half I omega squared. I'm going to do the trick that I did with uh, linear momentum. So if I multiply this by I and I divide it by I, now I'm looking at L squared over 2I. Okay, so that's good if you have to answer multiple choice questions on or uh, compare. So basically what it means is like if you have two objects with the same lin uh, angular momentum, which one is going to have more rotational kinetic energy is the one with less uh, moment of inertia. Okay, for number 75. Okay, the, okay which of the following describes an action by the child that will result in an increase? in the total angular momentum of the child platform system? Uh, the answer should be D, because if the kid moves closer or further away, he doesn't generate an external torque. The torque has to come from outside. Maybe someone come in here and spin in this or slowing it down, okay? So as long as there is no external imp uh, torque or rotational impulse, if you, like, if you like to call it, then there will be no change in the angular momentum. 76, a satellite that is spinning, a spinning cylinder has an initial rotational inertia IO and angular velocity omega O. Solar panels unfold from the satellite and are extended out. So in, okay, the satellite then has a rotational inertia IF equals A IO. So that A has to be greater than one because IF has to be greater at this point because more mass is on the outside, okay? And this B has to be less than one, okay? Because the omega now is less because now, because when you extend the mass out, you slow down. So the answer should be a B for that one. And we are on the last one. Okay, suppose a star the size of our sun, but twice but with mass eight times as great, we're rotating at a speed of one revolution every 10 days. I'm gonna leave it in revolutions per day, okay? If it were to undergo gravitational collapse to a neutron star of radius 10 kilometers, losing three-fourths of its mass, which means now we only left with one quarter of the mass, what would its rotational speed be? And they're assuming that the, uh, the thrown off mass does not carry any angular momentum. So here I'm going to do, uh, uh, so it's spinning on itself. So this is kind of like, uh, like a sphere. 
So I'm going to do initial momentum equals final momentum because there's no external, external torque. So it's two-fifths. Um, now it has eight times. Well, I'm just going to say M. Yeah, I don't care what the mass of the sun is. So I'm just going to say M, actually. Two-fifth M uh, is the size of our sun, which means the same radius. So 696 times 10 to the third square. So this is the I for a sphere. Now, I can leave this in kilometers as long as the other side is also in kilometers times omega. Now, omega is one revolution per one revolution per 10 days. So that's my omega. So I'm going to leave it in revolutions per days. Equals, okay, on the other side, we're going to have, it's still a sphere, two fifths, but we're only going to have a quarter of this mass. So, okay. So I really don't care what, what the mass is. So it's going to be a quarter of the mass. Now, and a radius of 10 kilometers squared. Now, if you do the math here, uh, and I'm missing omega here, final, okay? So let me make sure I got it right. Yep, we got that, we got that, we got that. Yep, so now if you do, if you do it, you're gonna find that it's 1.94 times 10 to the ninth omega final is 1.94 times 10 to the ninth I think revolutions per day. Yep, that's our, that's that. It's pretty fast. Okay, and uh, that's it. All right.